Okay, so today we're going to look at playing a song using an Arduino. Just a single buzzer can only play one note at a time. Um, if you want to play more notes at a time, you would need some type of device to convert a digital signal to an analog signal. Um, some microcontrollers have uh, DACs or digital analog converters, but um, because what happens is when you have multiple frequencies, well, anytime you play a note, like on an instrument, those um, there are multiple frequencies playing at the same time. And then if you're trying to play multiple frequencies at the same time, you have interactions between those sine waves that they create. And um, that's not something you can replicate with a single buzzer with that's being output with it. You could do it with a single buzzer, but not that's being um, controlled by a digital signal. So anyway, um, that's neither here nor there. We're playing a single note at a time, and so this is going to be a sketch to create a song. And there's a couple new things here. So the first thing we see up at the top is these pound define statements. And so there's a pound define. There's a kind of a word or symbol that we're using as like a variable, and then we are um, have a, a number after it. And these are kind of like variables. They're a little bit different. The way that they work is that they are. Um, Sometimes you can use them for um, for quantities that you know are going to stay constant. Okay, so like I'm not planning to change the value of B5 anywhere in my code. And so what happens is instead of creating a variable that can change when the compiler, the device that kind of takes this and does all the work with it to turn it into code that the Arduino can read, when it goes through all this stuff, before it compiles the code, it's going to just go through and replace any instance of D5 with the number 587. And it's going to do the same thing with all those. And so it's a tool for us to make the code more readable and writable. And so when you write your song, you can go in and add more of these statements. And let's say you want to add a G6 in there or a G flat. So let's see G flat 6. And then you could type in the frequency. So I have the frequency look up here. So G flat 6 is 1480 hertz. So we'll say 1480, just like that. Okay, and then you can go ahead and add your own. I also have some here to indicate the length of delays. If you want to have a note be off, so like you have like a rest or something in your song, you can just type in off instead of one of those. And then, um, you have you can change the, the length of these delays and you can add more types of delays like there's like a short delay a long delay you can add longer shorter delays however you want to do it okay so you have these options so you can add or subtract from these as you need to and then the the key parts to your song is we have two of these things called arrays which are lists of numbers so we have two lists of numbers the first one we call tones and we're putting in the all the numbers that we're using for our notes or frequencies and we have a second array called delays that says how long those notes are going to go for okay and so you can see here i just did the same delay for all of them clearly when you listen to the song i could have done better but um just trying to get the point across and if you want to do more with it you're welcome to okay so we're going to go into here about um what arrays are in just a minute but there's a check here at the beginning to make sure the length of your tones array and the length of your delays array is the same size. And then here we get into the song. So we have a for statement. We're starting with the value of i equal to zero. And it's going to loop through this with the value zero. So on the speaker plane, it's going to call the value stored under zero in the i in the tones array. And it's going to wait a value equal to the, the, the value stored under zero in the delays array. Then it's going to turn the speaker off just for a small bit. You can remove this part if you want, but um, this is a way that you can get little gaps in the notes. And then it's going to increment and go to the next one and so on until it's gotten through all the, the notes in your array. Okay, and that's the whole song. It's just in the setup. There's no loop in this case. And yeah, that's it. So I'm going to do kind of a deep dive here in arrays, and then we'll go ahead and listen to the song. Okay, so when, when we are writing code in C or C++, we declare a variable. So let's say we create an integer, and let's say we call it x, and it has a value equal to 7. 
Okay. Now what's happening here is we have, there's like a whole like map of the system memory. And what we've done is we've reserved a spot in the memory that's equal to the size of an integer. And it's going to store the value of seven there. And so anytime we call X, it's going to come over here and it's going to look in what that bucket has. And if it's the seven currently, it'll be at seven. If it's changed at some point, it'll be whatever it changed to. And then we have all this memory for our system here. And this little spot here is reserved for that particular variable. Okay. So let's say instead though that I hope want a whole bunch of numbers that go together and I want to kind of keep them organized. In that case, I can make something called an array. And so the way we declare an array is we give it a name and then we put these little brackets next to it. Now you have the option of saying how much, how big the array is inside those brackets, or we can just put some curly braces now that say all the values in the array. So let's say like, um, a, B, C, D, and then we'll have the semicolon at the end. And so this is an array that has four values in it. And so what this does is, instead of setting aside the space for one integer, it's going to set aside the space for four. And it's just going to kind of reserve that space consecutively um, so that they're all together. And so you have this larger block of memory that represents our array. Okay, and so when we want to look up a value, we have to use an index. And so they, you basically just count forward from the starting value to get the one you want. And so the starting value is going to be count from zero. Then we have one, then we have two, and then we have three. So if I were to type X with the three index of three, that's going to spit out the value D. If I have X with the index one, that's going to spit out the value B. Okay. And so array is really just a series of buckets for values, right? And so if we say there's, um, and then the, if we instead were to, yeah, we'll, sorry, we'll, we'll leave there. We won't overcomplicate this. So, and we can change those values so we could say, x of 1 or x1 is equal to j and then that will in your array it will be replaced as a comma j comma c comma d something like that and so you this is a very useful tool for storing a bunch of values that go together okay and so you can be creative about it like if let's say that you wanted to have an array of L, like a bunch of leds that you're going to control all at once well you could store them in an array and you could loop through that array and perform some kind of operation on each of those pins um, they have stored there there's lots of things you can do with them um, but so a couple other notes um, in in this in C in C++ they don't actually protect against trying to access values that aren't included in your array and that's um, something that you have to kind of be careful again. So like, let's say that we have we typed in X with the index of five or four. Well, the highest index here is three. If I put in a five here, it will go ahead and look up the memory located. So this is zero, one, two, three, four, five, the memory located right here. Now we haven't stored anything there, but probably there's something there um just we don't realize it and so this you can get yourself into some trouble because you can change memory stored in locations that you're not supposed to have access to because you could change that value you could print out that value you can do all kinds of stuff with it and so you want to be careful not to access the value outside of your array because you end up with like some garbage okay and so if we look back at our song example here the way that we protect against that is we actually do a calculation to determine how many notes there are in the array. And the way we do that is using this size of function. And you don't need to touch these or mess with these, but I'll just explain how it works. And so what this does is we have amount of space set aside in our memory for this tones array. And when we look at the size of function on the tones array, it's going to tell us how much, how many like bytes of storage there are 
for the tones array. And then if we look at the size of tones zero, like the first element in the tones array, then that's going to tell us how big that is. So let's say if it's an integer, so it's maybe two bytes. Um, tones is however many bytes long, so it's going to divide those to tell us the total number of tones. And what we'll go ahead and do is we'll print those out so we can see them. So we'll do um, serial dot print um, ln. We'll do size of tones so we can see how long how big that is. And we'll do a serial dot print ln size of tones zero okay so we'll go ahead and print those values so you can see what they look like and we'll also go ahead and listen to the song here so we'll bring this into the tinkercad simulator so the song is going to come out really bad because it's for some reason the tinkercad simulator doesn't do a great job playing the songs um but you can see over here that we have um all the code pasted in it's going to print out these kind of size of thing calculations we did and it's going to play the song after that All right, so it played "You Are My Sunshine." Um, as you can hear, there it could it could use some work with the uh, different delays, and I probably had some extra notes in there. But one thing you'll notice down here, it also printed out the size of tones, which was 124 bytes, and then the size of the first element of tones, which was two bytes. Well, if we divide those, 124 divided by two is going to be 62. So that means we have 62 notes here. And if you go ahead and count, you'll see that. Um, and we just want to make sure we have the same number of tones and delays. Otherwise, we'll be accessing either too few delays or we'll be accessing like a delay that doesn't exist. Because what happens here is we're, we're accessing delays based on the number of tones. And so you have to have kind of the same amount for each of them. Okay, so anyway, this is a pretty quick overview on arrays. Um, your job now is going to be to go through and kind of change this code make it your own uh, create your own song so you can look up a song anything you can find the notes for just remember you can only play one note at a time um, and yeah you can you can change add more notes you could remove some notes however you want to do it and so um, have fun with it I'm looking forward to hearing your songs